In this video, we're going to be looking at using prime bases to simplify or help us simplify exponential expressions. You need to be able to know and learn the skill in order to help us answer questions like this one, and eventually questions like this one, which will come later in this playlist. Look at step one. So for this, I want you to grab your calculator. Hopefully you have a Casio calculator. There's a way to do this without a calculator. We use a factor tree or a factor ladder, which I do go through in my grade eight videos, but we are allowed to use a calculator if we're in grade 10, 11, 12, so on. This is how we do it. We take our calculator, let's actually choose a number. Okay, let's choose 36. So how you do this is you take your calculator, you type in the number on your calculator. So type in 36, then press the equals button. Okay, then you're going to press shift up here. And then you're going to press this button. At the top of the button, it says fact, F-A-C-T, fact. So that's what our button or my button on my Casio looks like. I know a lot of people have Casios. So that is what the button looks like. But you have to press shift in order to activate the fact function of that. So again, you press the number 36. Okay, you press equals, you then press shift, and then you press that button, which is fact. And can you see what my calculator gives me? It gives me 36, but written as a product of its prime basis. So 2 to the power of 2 multiplied by 3 to the power of 2. Remember, 2 is a prime number, 3 is a prime number. So it's a product of its prime numbers. 2 to the power of 2 is 4, and 3 to the power of 2 is 9, and 9 times 4 is 36. Okay, so it's just another way of writing 36. Knowing how to do this is going to be very important moving forward because you could get questions like this. Calculate the following without the use of a calculator. Now, how are you going to do this if you don't have a calculator? Well, I just taught you a new skill. You're going to write 27 first as a product of its prime factors. So type in 27 equals shift fact. You get 3 to the power of 3. Sometimes you can just guess. I mean, not guess, but you know, you know, 3 to the power of 3 gives me 27. So instead of writing 27, I write 3 to the power of 3. And can you see that 27 was originally raised to the exponent 2 over 3? So I'm going to raise this to 2 over 3. Now, what we're going to do is what we discussed in our previous video where we revised the laws of exponents. Power inside multiplied by power outside. Basically, what we're doing is this. Okay? Essentially, the 3s are going to cancel. So it's going to be 3 to the power of 2 and three to the power of two is nine. If you can't see that the threes cancel, just use your calculator to multiply three times two over three, or think of it like this. Three can be written as three over one. This can be written as two over three. Those cancel, or you can think of it like this. Top times top, three times two is six. Bottom times bottom, one times three is three. Six over three is two. Either way, we get to the 2 over there. 3 to the power of 2 is 9. Pause the screen and try the next one by yourself, and then I'll go over it with you. Okay, in this case, 4 can be rewritten as 2 to the power of 2. That is going to be raised to negative 3 over 2. So we write it as a product of its prime factors, its prime bases, okay? Prime bases, so 2 is a prime, 3 is a prime, prime bases, prime basis, that's why I call it prime basis, and then we do power inside times power outside. Essentially, what is going to happen is these twos are going to cancel. It's going to be two to the power of negative three, but remember, as discussed in the previous video, we can't leave an exponent as negative, so we write it as one over two to the power of three, which is equal to one over eight. If you need revision, why this is equal to this, just go watch my previous video, but my answer is one over eight. Now, knowing what we know, let's see if we can answer a more complicated question like this one. Pause the screen, try it, unpause it, and do it with me. What's nice about questions like these is there's different steps that you can follow, different orders to the steps, but you can end up at the same answer. So I will also end up combining steps. You just have to stay with me. The first step, I just use my calculator to see if I can simplify 81 divided by 16. Because you should be familiar with seeing questions like this, maybe in grade 10 or maybe 9, we did questions where maybe there was a 6 at the top and a 3 at the bottom, and then we had like x 
cubed and x squared and y and y to the power of 5, something like that. In this case, we can say, oh, 6 divided by 3 is 2. So we can simplify it that way. But if you try 81 divided by 16 on your calculator, you don't get a whole number. So we need to approach this differently. And the first step that I would recommend is writing as a product of your prime bases. So 81 is 3 to the power of 4. So I'm just rewriting it as a product of my primes. Everything else is staying the same for now. 16 is 2 to the power of 4, okay? And then we've got x, y to the power of negative 4. Everything else is staying the same for now. Then the next thing that got my attention, and remember I said the order in which you do this can differ, but what I decided to do first was to sort out what was going on inside the brackets first, kind of like bod mass. So you first sort out everything inside the bracket, simplify everything inside the bracket. So what I notice is that I have some negative exponents. And as I mentioned in previous videos, if you need recaps on exponent laws, you have to go watch those. You can move things around when the exponents are negative. So three to the power four can stay, okay? Y to the power four can stay at the top. Two to the power four can stay at the bottom and x can stay at the bottom because they all have positive exponents. But then x to the power of negative 3, I'm going to move downstairs. It's going to be x to the power of positive 3. Then y to the power of negative 4, I'm going to move upstairs. It's going to become y to the power of 4. The operation that's in between all of these things is multiplication. It was multiplication. It stays multiplication. So the only thing I've done in the next step from this step over here to the step over here is I've moved the things with negative exponents either up or down to make them have positive exponents. Then I'm going to simplify what you see inside the bracket. So what I mean is if you are multiplying like I am doing upstairs, so three to the power four can stay, here I'm multiplying these two, their bases are the same. So you keep the base, you add the exponents, four plus four is eight. I can do the same at the bottom, two to the power four can stay, x, to the power of 1 multiplied by x to the power of 3, you keep the base, you add the exponents. Okay, next step. In my exponent recap video, I told you that if this is a negative over here, I can change it to a positive. Okay, I can change it to a positive 3 over 4. So go from negative to a positive. And when I do that, all I do here is flip this fraction. So 2 to the power of 4 comes to the top x to the power 4 comes to the top, and here 3 to the power 4 goes to the bottom, and y to the power of 8 goes to the bottom. So I flip the fraction because I changed this from a negative to a positive. Then what I'm going to do in the next step is power inside multiplied by power outside. So you need to multiply each of these exponents by the exponent on the outside. So this next part you can, if you want, do it on your calculator. So 4 multiplied by 3 over 4, the 4s will end up cancelling. So it's 2 to the power of 3. You can also type 4 times 3 over 4 on your calculator and you will get 3. Okay, those 4s cancel. Then 4 again multiplied by 3 over 4 is going to be x to the power of 3. At the bottom... Now we got 4 again multiplied by 3 over 4, so it's going to be 3 to the power of 3, and then y to the power of 8, it's 8 multiplied by 3 over 4. If you need to, you can write it on the side like this. Basically, it's 8 times 3, which is 24, divided by 4, which is 6, so y to the power of 6. Or again, just type that in as is on your calculator. So what that leaves me with is 2 to the power of 3, 8 at the top, x to the power of 3, 27 at the bottom, 3 to the power of 3 is 27, y to the power of 6. Now, as I've mentioned already, there's a different order in which you can do this if you wish to. So what I mean is in the beginning of the sum, when I first, what did I do first? Let's go back. I first wrote as product of prime bases. That's important. So writing as product of prime bases is important. But then maybe what you immediately do afterwards is you say power inside times power outside. Maybe you do it immediately at this step. You can. You are allowed to. That's the nice thing about exponents because you should end up at the same answer. I hope that that was helpful. Remember, if you want a recap of the exponent laws, I do have a video on that where I go over all of these briefly. For more videos, Furthering this chapter, check out the links in the description box below. Bye, everyone.